here is our actual equation. So here's what we have going on. We have our change in L. We have our coefficient expansion. We have our original, which we're going to call it I for initial because we don't really use O for original in our class. We've always used I, so we're going to use I for original in our change in temperature. So all we need is coefficients of expansion, which we see down here. We can put these numbers in. Notice how they're pretty small numbers, so it's a small multiplier. And we can, with this, solve for anything that we need to. All right. So let's go to a practice then. Um, why do roads sometimes buckle in the summertime? All right. We've already kind of answered that, right? Um, as a road expands, there's no place for it to go, and it actually can buckle and break. So then why do some roads seem rougher in the winter? Okay, think about it for a second, and then we'll get to an answer here. All right, so let's answer this now. So why do roads seem rougher in the winter? Well, if you think about it, in the wintertime, everything contracts, right? So all those little cracks in the road that we have in the summertime that are filled or full now expand, or sorry, contract together, and it leaves openings or gaps in the road, okay? Those little gaps we feel as little bumps as we go down and drive the road. Other things that can happen is they now open up, then water gets in them when it snows, then the water freezes, and water is completely opposite of everything else in the world, where water, when it freezes, it actually contracts or it actually expands. So this liquid to solid phase for water is unique in the fact it gets bigger in that case, which then causes even more cracking, which causes potholes and causes our road to be a problem. Okay, So really, the reason why in Minnesota we're constantly fixing roads in the springtime, filling potholes, is to, has 100% to do with this idea of thermal contraction um, when it gets colder and then water seeping in and causing havoc with those openings in the roads. If it wasn't for the water, if it was a dry area, it would, they, would just get, they would just get smaller. We'd feel rougher roads. In the summertime, they would just get closer up and put it back together. Okay? It's also why, uh, have you ever noticed that they seal our roads? So they, in the springtime, usually, you'll see crews out there, and they'll be like putting like a, like a rubber kind of material down, and they usually have like a little white tape over top of it. You might have seen that on the roads before. And they do that in the springtime because they, after it's thawed, so the moisture is out, and they want to fill those cracks in to help protect them from through the summertime. Okay? If you're entering a new railway, what's one thing you would need to factor into your plans regarding the information we are studying? Okay? Same idea here, right? So if we have a new railway, we're going to definitely want to um, deal with the fact that that rail line is going to expand in the winter, in the summertime, and contract in the winter time. So we'd have to build in expansion joints to deal with that. All right. Now two problems for you. So here is um, some true data here. Our new 35W bridge is 371 meters long. Um, if we're going to allow for complete expansion and contraction, how long must the combined expansion joints be if Minneapolis can range from 42 degrees Celsius to negative 41 degrees Celsius in a year? Um, if we're assuming the bridge is made mostly of concrete. So concrete thermal expansion is 12 times 10 to the negative 6 um, per degree Celsius. So we know our original length. Okay, We know the coldest it gets. We know the warmest it gets. And we know our thermal expansion. Okay, so let's solve for um, how big those joints need to be. Okay, that's the first one. Second one, Golden Gate Bridge is 2,737 meters in length on an average 25 degree day in California. How long would it be if if it was Minnesota, where the average low temperature in January is negative 14 degrees Celsius? Um, if it's made of steel, all right. So if we take this bridge and moved it from California and brought it to Minnesota, how much would this thing shrink is what we want to look at here. Okay. So solve them both. Pause the video. And when you're ready, um, we'll give you the answers. Okay. So now let's stick here and then solve this. So we have this range of temperatures here, right, from 42 to negative 41. So I'm going to actually solve for what's our range inside of here, assuming it can get as cold as this and as warm as that, and then apply that to our length. Okay. So here's our initial length. We know that the range of temperatures, our change in temperature can be 83 degrees Celsius. So it's a 42 minus a negative 41, which gives us 83. Our coefficient expansion was this. So plug into our equation. Um, we have our coefficient expansion times the original length times our range of temperatures. And in that case, um, that bridge can, can shift, or it does actually shift. This is real data here. Um, potential that is theoretical, but it's potential 0.37 of a meter. Okay, so if you think about that, that's over a foot. 
Okay, so that bridge between wintertime and summertime in the extremes, it can get uh, over a foot longer. It can get 14 and a half inches longer or 14 and a half inches shorter. Now, they don't just have one expansion joint. They probably have, I haven't counted, they probably have multiple expansion joints, each one being two or three inches across the bridge. So that way it can absorb this movement um, systematically across that bridge, okay? Which is might be more than you expected it to be. Now, Golden Gate Bridge, it was this original in California at this temperature of 39 degrees Celsius is our difference now because we went from 25 to negative 14. We have our, our expansion for steel, plug our numbers in, and the new t length or the change in length um, would be 1.17. So it was 2737 meters. Our change was 1.17 meters, okay? So it would now be about 2736 meters. So we lose a whole meter of length on that bridge. Is if in effect that bridge would almost be four feet shorter if we brought it from California to here. Okay, that's a pretty big difference. Now in California, the range of temperatures isn't as great, so it's not that big of a deal for them um, for this. They had to do more engineering design about you know vibrations and you know earthquake control that kind of stuff. They have less to worry about in terms of thermal and uh, expansion and contraction because they don't have as much temperature variation in that area. Okay. All right, guys, that wraps up this video lesson. In the next one, we're going to go into this idea of specific heat capacity. Thank you.